I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days And watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways But if my Savior called me to that sweet home on high I'll live with Him forever in glory by and by Oh yes, I'll live in glory, live in Thank you for tuning in to our Bible study program entitled Christ Mind in You, Philippians 2.5. This program is brought to you by Nathan Church of Christ in Nathan, Arkansas. Dear ones, it is a true joy to study the Word of God with you. We're reading the words of the Savior who truly loves and cares for your soul. In Matthew 9, it tells about Jesus who went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and disease among the people. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. His great soul, his great heart, felt compassion for humanity as we struggle through this life with our burdens, as we handle difficulties. And they needed the Savior. They had the weight of the errors of the scribes and Pharisees on their backs, they were scattered abroad like a sheep having no shepherd. Then said he to his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, and the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. My name is Gene Jester, and I preach in southwest Arkansas at Nathan Church of Christ, Saratoga Southside Church of Christ, and teach at McCaskill and sometime preach there. Let's go to our God in prayer before we begin this study this morning. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your love and the Lord Jesus Christ's love that you cared enough for us, for our souls, to send Jesus to die and shed his cleansing blood so we could obey you and have forgiveness of sins. Thank you for the Bible and the Church of Christ. Thank you for the hope of heaven promised to faithful members of Christ's church. Please forgive my sins and all, all other Christians who repent and pray. And may the lost give heed to your word and obey the gospel and become Christians. Be with the sick. Help the lonely, the grieved, the troubled, and bless our boys and girls as they grow up. Bless our homes and marriages. Prosper our work in all good ways. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're continuing our study to cover this chapter before we begin a study of the works of the flesh and the fruits of the Spirit. In the what days to come, the Lord willing. 2 Timothy 3, we're down to verse 8. We've been reading about men who ever learn and ever able to come to a knowledge of the truth. And then he says, Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds and reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. He says, These fellows that I'm talking about that he listed, listed already, like, I don't know, 18 sins or something, I forgot the count I had on them. Many different sins. And he gives an example in the Old Testament that uh, these false teachers were alike. They, as Janice and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these. And he, he gives three descriptions of these false teachers who fought against Timothy and Paul and others who taught truth. One, they resist the truth. Two, they are men of corrupt minds. And three, they're reprobate concerning the faith. But he said they're not going to last forever. They're going to give an account. Their folly won't proceed any further. They'll, they'll be manifest unto all men as Janice and Jambres was. Now think about, we don't know for sure who Janice and Jambres are, but Jewish tradition said that they were two of the magicians back in the days of Moses and Aaron when God sent Moses and Aaron over to uh, lead the people out of Egypt to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. In Exodus chapter 7, it says, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, that is Moses and Aaron, saying, Show a miracle for you, then you shall say to Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. Thinking about serpents or snakes, a young man that works with me some killed a rattlesnake the other day in the Ozan River Creek bottom that was six and a half feet long, 15 rattlers and a button. He also killed a four and a half foot rattlesnake coming close to where our, one of our places is on the gravel road. The snakes are out in Arkansas in August, September in this period of time. Well, anyway, a, snurf, a serpent uh, 
uh, Aaron's rod became a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down the key as they did as the Lord commanded. But Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh, and before his servants it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and sorcerers, and now the magicians of Egypt. These guys were full of witchcraft or sorcery. They were doing magic. They were pulling snakes out of somewhere, out of a, like a trick. There was a trick. They weren't really... They produced those snakes like magicians do when they pull a rabbit out of a hat. I don't know where they pulled the snake out from, but it became, the rod became a snake. They also didn't like man with enchantments, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Now there was the power of the real miracle. Aaron's snake swallowed up their snake. His rods swallowed up their rods. God did true miracles to confirm his word of Moses and Aaron. When, when uh, Moses told Pharaoh, let my people go, his uh, servants of the devil, like Jannes and Jammers, we think would have been two of their names, resisted the truth, corrupt-minded men who pulled magic and made out like they were men of uh, superpower, which they weren't really. They were human beings like the rest of us. Could not work miracles. The point is, God has worked miracles in times past. He's used signs and wonders to confirm his word. He did them partly through compassion in the days of the Lord and the apostles on the earth and the those the apostles laid hands on, but it was uh, primarily the purpose was to confirm the word in the Old Testament days when, when God had Moses tell Aaron throw his rod down, it became a serpent. Uh, and it was in the New Testament days. We read in the New Testament about the true men of God, the apostles and those they laid hands on, called the prophets, of Ephesians 3, 5, and 6, who were guided by the Holy Ghost and could do miracles confirming the word. And we see Christ in the New Testament in uh, Mark chapter 16, given the great commission to the apostles. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new languages or tongues, they shall take up serpents like Paul did on the island and he didn't die from the poison serpent bite. They shall, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, the apostles, he was received up into heaven, read Acts 1 and see a, the other, another account of this, and sat on the right hand of God. Christ went back to heaven to sit on the right hand of God as the king of the kingdom, the head of his church, our Savior, our Lord, and our high priest, until the judgment day when he will come back to be our judge. And they, that is the apostles, went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. That's miracles, or we call commonly miracles, were confirm, used to confirm the word the apostles preached as being a message from heaven, not a a message that men, that the apostles themselves dreamed up. So our Lord, even though he was in heaven, by baptizing the apostles with the Holy Spirit, Acts 2, fulfilling his promise in Acts 1, then all flesh was represented by the Gentiles, was Jews, and the Gentiles received over in Acts 10, uh, eight years later. So Jew and Gentile received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Apostle Paul in Acts 9 received it, and it's not recorded the exact moment he received it, but he started preaching immediately, so it would have been soon after his conversion. Because he said in 2 Corinthians 12, 11, verse 5, I'm not one whit behind the very chiefest of the apostles. And in 2 Corinthians 12, 12, Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. The Apostle Paul said at Corinth, I did the signs of the apostles. So he had the Holy Spirit baptism just like the twelve apostles did there in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2. Actually, Acts chapter 2 is where it happened. As Christ sent it straight from heaven. But he, uh, the apostles, and then the ones they laid hands on could work those signs, one or more of those uh, gifts of the Spirit that were uh, mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8 through 10. Prophecy, wisdom, knowledge, uh, discerning of spirits, Miracles, a special category, healing, 
interpret speaking in languages, interpretation of languages. Those nine gifts of the Spirit, the, the uh, prophets also could do one or more of. And God used these signs to confirm the word that was coming from heaven, not just from some man's ideas. In Hebrews chapter 2 is another passage where the Hebrew writer says, Therefore we ought to give them our earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? At first began to be spoken to us by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. The writer there is making a plea, and I've lived long enough to see people do this thing that he's begging us not to do. Let the word of God slip out of their lives and quit serving the Lord and become, uh, what we say, procrastinators or go into some false religion. Usually, you know, if we let the Lord's word and the Lord's way out of our lives, the Lord leads our lives because of our rebellion. The devil will take up residence. You can't serve two masters, Matthew 6, 24. You'll love the one, hate the other. Hold the one, despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon. But here the Hebrew writer said, give earnest heed. I mean, keep this book in your mind and heart. Take it seriously. Don't let these things taught here slip. I've seen people live long enough to quit being faithful Christians who were at one time great Christians. And then he reminds them of how under Moses' law, if they didn't keep the word, they would get a promised punishment. He even could be stoning. For example, if a young man was caught cussing his mom and daddy and being reprobate, disobedient, disrespectful, drinking and glutton and wouldn't mind them, he could turn them over to the elders of the land. They could have him stoned to death. Or if a man was caught in fornic adultery or if he was caught in homosexuality or bestiality or the various sins, he could be stoned to death. Him and the, him and the one involved with him. So, in the old law, he said, they received a just recompense of reward. If they were need to be punished, they were punished. And how we're going to escape, he said, in the New Testament days, under Jesus Christ, in the better way that was confirmed unto us by those who heard him, that's the apostles, because they'd been with him in the three and a half year ministry. And then, verse 4 said, God proved through them that it was the message of Christ that they were giving us in this New Testament and in their personal teaching and preaching as they went about in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth, carrying the Great Commission. And he, he backed up their word with signs, wonders, and divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, which they passed on to the men that were, became Christians they could lay hands on so they could teach the word without error before the New Testament was completed. Now there, there is what we find that miracles confirmed the word of God in both the old law and in the New Testament days. No longer do we have miracles. There are no miracles today. Same God, same power. He answers prayer providentially, but he won't do it in a miraculous fashion. The days of miracles ceased when the apostles and those they laid hands on died. At the same time as Zechariah prophesied, the inhabiting of men's bodies by demons ceased. We don't have miraculous, quote, demon possession today. We have the influence of Satan and the demons, the devils. Yes, we do. Still working on our hearts, consciences, our minds, and through people in all sorts of ways. But we don't have miraculous control of a person like they did at that time. This, this passage where Paul said, Surely the signs and apostles were wrought among you, 2 Corinthians 12, 12, and all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. Paul said, I work miracles to confirm the word. Yes, these kind of guys that 2 Timothy 3 is talking about are like Janes and Jambres. They were resisting truth. They were false teachers, not true teachers of truth. They could not confirm the word with signs following. They were making up lies, leading souls astray. And the Bible says in Matthew 15, let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. The blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Friends, our Lord wants to save you. He wants to save us. He wants to save us all. But these fellows need to learn, like Janice and Jambres, that it won't work to resist the Lord and truth. We must love the Lord and love the truth and teach the truth. Our time's about that. We're here because we love you and God loves you and Christ Jesus died for your precious soul. Please tune in next week, same time. And watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways. But if my Savior called me to that sweet home on high, I'll live with him. Speech on. Flashlight. Switch button. Camera. Button. Double flat calc timer selected. Music recognition selected. Screen recording.